just put that... Oh, look, be careful with that. That's the Last Supper, not a sofa from Derry and Tom's. That's worth more than you'll earn in a lifetime. All going to plan, I hope, Dr. Collins. I said no press interviews. Not my idea, but the official censor. Now, if you... Inspector Hanson, sir. Oh, so you're Isabel's husband. I was wondering whether we'd see you. I hope it's all going well. Oh, swimmingly, Mr. Hanson, swimmingly. You've missed Mr. Goebbels, but you can catch Mr. Starlin if you hurry. I'm sorry, Dr. Collins. Well, that is why you're all here, getting underfoot. But to oversee the safe removal of Britain's art treasures. And to offer you any assistance we can. Oh, well, the best assistance you and your chaps could offer would be to keep well out of things. That way you can all soon trot off to your nice warm beds. With, of course, big, big apologies to Isabel from me for keeping you away from her for a whole night. She said to send her best wishes for the journey, sir. She's sorry you'll miss the opening of her new exhibition. I'll be back for that. Will you? Oh, yes, I'm not spending any war. If indeed there is a war, babysitting a load of pictures in the back of beyond. It's enough I've had all the wretched things moved out in the first place. There's a lot of fun to be had in London, in wartime. Uh, I don't know. George, George, why doesn't this wrap up? Oh, come with me, Inspector. I, I just need to check those cretins. I've left the optician in the gym. Now, listen, you chat. Of course, now it's empty. One can see what a ghastly old barn of a place it really is. Well, what's going to happen to it? Happen? Oh, nothing. Why? Have you heard something? I mean, a large building like this. If there are heavy air raids... Oh, well, what's not going to happen, Inspector, is this place be used as some glorified DOS house for the great unwashed. Not if I have anything to do with it, which I certainly have. You might not have a choice. Dr. Collins, oh, there you are. The last of the cases oh, in our... Oh, Just in time to prevent me from offending the good constable's red brick socialist sensibilities any further. I'm sorry. Well, I get the impression... Inspector Hanson thinks this is all a bit of a waste of time. Hello, Inspector. Isabel's husband, no less. Oh, Mr. Hanson, how do you do? How do you do? As I've said before, quite how our most lovely trustee managed to make a love match with you is an everlasting mystery to me. Dr. Collins. Oh, I know. Ignore me. I'm terrible. It's not a problem, Dr. Collins. I've met worse than you. Far worse. Yes, so is everything cleared from the lower galleries, Paget? They're just bringing the last of the things up from the basement now. There's just bric-a-brac from those funny rooms. It's all in that case, over there. Mm. Oh, must be a few. Oh, well, that's all we need. What's that? Probably just the central heating system or something. Ah. Oh, well, let there be light. Eh, hey, Paget? Probably just a power surge. Oh, now, for goodness sake, be careful with that, you cretins! I must apologise on behalf of Dr. Collins. The move, he's been very wrought. Well, we all have. I realise it's been a great upheaval. Oh, I don't know. I know it's for the best, but I can't help feeling all this disturbing things, moving things that haven't been moved or disturbed for years. It... Yes. Oh, well, no matter. Come with me, Inspector. This is Lan Festiniog. Clan Festiniog, it might be. But that again, it might be Clapham Junction. And who's asking? Inspector Hansen of Scotland Yard. Uh, you'll be for that lot up at Manor, then. Yes, this is the place. Stand back, please. Definitely not Clapham Junction. Excuse me, hello. It's Inspector Hanson, isn't it? Ruth Paget from the gallery. Hello again, Miss Paget. Over a year ago. Tell me how time has a way of whizzing by. Thank you for coming all this way. Did you have a good journey? Oh, the trains are such a nightmare. I went home for a few days last year. It took me almost a day and a half. Awful. I take it there's been no word from Dr. Collins? No, none. Nothing at all. I was... we all were so sorry to hear about Isabel, Mrs. Hanson. Thank you. It was so cruel she should have been going to an exhibition opening, so unfair. Isabel believed it was important to keep things going as normal. These air raids are so terrible. Some of the things my sister tells me in her letters, it's really evil what they're doing. There's no other word for it. I imagine we're doing pretty much the same to the Germans. I'm sorry? 
Is it evil to follow instructions? Do what you're told? Well, of course it is. I mean... Anyway, I'm very sorry. Are you hungry? I dare say our billet could rustle you up something. Mrs Evans is very good about that sort of thing. Have you got your ration book? I'd like to go straight to where Dr Collins was last seen, if that's all the same to you, Miss Paget. Yes, of course. I don't know the drill in these matters, I'm afraid. Transport awaits. Oh, be careful. That door has a tendency to fall off. You don't all live at the site. Oh, gracious, no. What an idea, no. We're scattered at various billets throughout the village. Though, of course, you don't want to know about all that. You want to know about Dr Collins. Yes. He's going away. Going missing. Oh, there, look. You can see the site over there. What are those tin sheds? Oh, no, they're part of the slate mine beyond there. On the mountainside? Inside the mountain. That's where the pictures are being kept, Inspector. Inside the mountain. I thought you knew. It's a bit gloomy. It's much better in the summer. At this time of year, we hardly get the sun at all on this side of the mountain. Uh, Mr. Hanson, forgive me for asking, are you a churchgoer? <laughs> No, I'm not. There's a chapel in the village. The vicar, pastor, that's what they call them here. Pastor Morgan, he's made me very welcome, been very supportive. When did you last see Dr Collins? A week ago to the day, Tuesday. The day we had all that snow, well, that's how I remember. As you can see, it's mostly gone now, thank goodness. And this was here? Yes. We all left about two. We were worried about getting stranded, you see, and he, well, that is, Dr Collins, stayed behind. Alone? Apart from Albert and Frank, our security guards, they watched the front gate at nights. And was this normal, his staying behind? No, not at all. Usually he was the first to leave. What happened then? Well, we came back the next morning and he was gone. So he'd left during the night? Yes. Well, he must have. The, the guards, when you speak to Albert and Frank... Yes? They're saying that no one came out. Here we are. The gates of Hades, as Dr Collins used to call them. Big enough to take a lorry. We sometimes do back a vehicle in there, but it's not very good with the exhaust. More often we make do with a wagon. Watch out for the railway tracks. It's so easy to trip, even with the lights. So, these are all slate mines. Were. This part of the mines was worked out some years ago. It's a bit wet underfoot, I'm afraid. Something to do with the drainage. Here... Apparently, this cavern's the size of the nave of Westminster Abbey. And the pictures are in that hut? Well, some of them. We have five huts in all. Five caverns, five huts. Room for the whole collection and several other collections besides. And they don't get damp down here? Not at all. Each building has its own two air conditioning plants with heaters and fans, so we can keep the air at a regular temperature. In fact, it's proved to be the ideal storage condition. We're finding none of the problems of cracking or warping we get back in London. It must have all cost a lot of money. Oh, money well spent. Why? Don't you approve? Is there somewhere we can talk, Miss Paget? We'll go through to my office. We can talk in there. I've told everything I know to the local police. And they searched the mines and the hillside. I was a little surprised to hear you were coming, I have to say. I suppose it was all those silly jokes he made. Dr Collins was a member of the Communist Party. So was everybody at Oxford in the 30s, so I'm led to believe. It was quite the thing. And this being the place it is, it was felt that Scotland Yard should get involved. Of course, he could have just gone away. Had he been away before? He was always going away. So, why ring the police if his going away was a regular occurrence? He usually let us know when he was going. And besides, he'd only got back from London that day. So, when we hadn't heard anything from him, I thought it best to tell someone. In the run-up to the time Dr Collins disappeared, did you notice anything unusual about him? No. Did he say anything you thought odd? Dr Collins was always saying rather peculiar things, as you know. I learned over the years to ignore most of them. Did he receive many phone calls? He was always on the phone, regardless of the cost, and as I say, he went away a lot. You say you've been away immediately before he disappeared? Yes. And did anyone come here, any strangers? No, no one apart from the gallery staff. 
I'm going to read you something. A plain brown door. No pictures or hangings of any kind. Bare boards, swept clean, a fireplace but no fire, little in the way of furniture. Does this describe anywhere you know? His office, his billet... No, it doesn't. Where did you find it? It was finally found amongst his papers at his London flat. It was dated the day before he came back here. Why, finally? Dr Collins wasn't the tidiest of people. Did he share this office? No, he had his own. I suppose you'll want to see it. Yes, please. Here we are, hut four. It's a bit dim in here, I'm afraid. We're trying to keep all the huts reasonably well lit, but for some reason the light isn't as strong in here. The effect with the faces is a bit eerie. Yes. All these are from the National Portrait Gallery, of course. Isn't that Anne Boleyn? Very good. Oil on wood, artist unknown. We've got them all down here. Disraeli, the Bronte sisters, all the kings and queens, the great and the good, as Dr Collins used to call them. And that's his office, there? Yes. I think he used to rather like being surrounded by such exalted company. That picture, the one stood against the end wall, isn't that one of the Georges? George the Second. It's being ready to be sent to London. Every month we send a picture for people to see. To raise morale? Well, that's why it's on its own. I kept his office locked. My little bit of London, he used to call it. Did he? He said even though he had to work in a morgue in a slate mine, he wasn't going to let it look like that. Hence the orange paint. And very tidy. Not at all like his flat. There's a lot of books. Art books. Life and works of Hogarth, William Hogarth, the pictures of William Hogarth. There's a lot of other books as well. Is that a recording machine? Is it? I don't know. And a gramophone? He used to play dance music. Used to? Sorry. You referred to Dr Collins in the past tense. What did I? Miss Paget, is there anything you need to tell me? No. I don't know where he is. But you know something. If I thought he was doing anything untoward, don't you think I'd have told the local police? Yes, I do. Which makes me wonder just what it is you're not telling me. Oh, please, be careful with that. I believe it's very expensive. Are there any cylinders? Cylinders? For the recording machine. It uses wax cylinders to record them to. I don't know. I've not seen any. I don't think he use, uses it much. I, I don't know. Well, it's an expensive piece of machinery not to use. Did he keep a journal of any description, a diary? Not to my knowledge. There's no papers? Papers? Letters, papers. His flat was littered with them. The correspondence is all in the main office in Chamber 2. We can go and look if you like. Tell me again, Miss Paget. when did you last see him? It was last week. Tuesday the 17th. The day of the snow. That's how I remember it. He'd been down to London. And he came back about two o'clock, just as we were preparing to leave for the day. I mean, normally we'd leave at five, but because of all the snow, the driver said we should leave early. But Dr Collins didn't. No. Dr Collins, we didn't expect you back. <sighs> didn't you? Excuse me. Surely you've surely not walked all this way in the snow. Obviously. You're soaked. You should have firmed down. One of us could have Excuse picked you up. Excuse me. But we're all going back to the village now. Mr Morgan says we could have trouble getting back down the mountain. I'm going to my office. Your office? My office. I've got some work to do. But surely you ought to come well, back with God's us. For God's sake, Paget, give it a rest. I'm going to my office. He stayed behind, and the next morning, when we came back up, he'd gone. What do you think happened, Miss Paget? Well, he left, of course. He can't just vanish into thin air. How did he leave? I mean, the guards said they'd not seen him, and even if he did, I repeat, how? What, walking? Well, it's five miles down the hill, and it had been snowing pretty much all day. What other explanation is there? If he didn't leave, there only is one explanation. Which is? He's still here. I imagine these mine workings go back a long way. There's the bell. It tells us the lorries are leaving for the day in five minutes. We need to go, Inspector. Don't let me keep you, Miss Paget. You're staying? I want to look round a bit more. Oh, you don't understand. Once the lorries have gone, there's no way of getting back down to the village. Apart from walking, yes, I realise that. You'll be here for the night. I know. You'll be here on your own. 
You better go, Miss Paget. They'll be waiting for you. Evening, Your Majesty. I'm afraid you are in my way. You're going to have to move. Oh. Boy, George, you wait there. <sighs> right, and there we are, one door. Hmm. Hmm. Padlocked keys. Keys. Hello. Hello. Is anyone there? Sorry about the noise, George. Okay. Oh, what's this? A picture. It's a, a house at night. Oh, Georgian. One of those you find in squares in London, facing a street. Across from the street is a small park. There's some coat of arms in the corner. No, it's not a painting. It, what's it called? Um, an engraving. Black sky, white moon. Black windows apart from one that's lit. In the bushes at the edge of the park, there's a figure stood. It looks like it's watching the house. Yo. <laughs> What's this? A soap box. And in the box. <laughs> well, one stack of journals and half a dozen wax recording cylinders. Should we take these into your office, Dr. Collins? Bold, clear handwriting. How long am I to be in exile in this godforsaken hole in the ground? Yes, Dr. Collins, that does sound very much like you. Well, let's see what you have to say for yourself. Six cylinders. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. found it then. You didn't think I wouldn't, did you? I didn't know what to think. As I keep telling you, I'm not an expert in this sort of thing, Inspector. I must say, I thought the door was quite well hidden. Behind a portrait of a German-born king. Hardly the best picture to show during wartime. And in a room about 70 foot long externally and 50 foot long internally. I realise this all must look very fishy. Where is Dr Collins? I don't know. That was his voice on the machine. Yes, it was. Which begs the question, what has got in, or rather, who has got in? I don't know. But you knew enough to hide the cylinders. Miss Paget, I've come a long way and I am tired. It'll save us both a lot of time if you just tell me what it is you do know. He's not here. That's all I know for sure. Look, Miss Paget, Ruth, a man, your colleague, has gone missing. I know. You owe it, if not to him, to this collection, to say what you know. I'm not sure you care two straws about this collection. I care about the truth, and I think you do too. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't quote the Bible at me like it's some cigarette card. You don't understand what's been happening here. Isn't it your Christian duty to make me understand? No matter what I believe. Why will I think you're mad? 
What? I know. It sounds so very far-fetched. I think you'd better just tell me. The first I knew of anything was about three weeks ago. Dr. Collins, we need to send to the village for some more terps. And I'm almost out of typing paper. Paget, Take a look at this. What do you make of it? It's an engraving. Yeah, I can see it's an engraving, Paget. I'll look in the catalogue. Isn't that one of the ones we unearthed in that funny basement room at the gallery? Oh, here we are. Picture of house. Hey, look, any cretin can see that. Who is the artist? Artist unknown. You know, sometimes, Paget, you're enough to try the patience of a saint. I realise it's an artist unknown. The point is... Who is he? Thing up. I've only just had it mended. That's a curious coat of arms in the corner. It's not like any I've seen before. Though the style seems familiar. Does it remind you of anyone in particular? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I altogether care for it's it. It's definitely the right period. Well, I can try and find out more if you want. Huh? Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> oh, and Paget, uh, keep this under your hat. Sorry? Try and resist the temptation to tell the whole place. Don't mention it in letters to that sister of yours. I don't know what you mean. Oh, and try and keep them from all those Welsh miners you keep making eyes at. <laughs> this is the picture in that room, the one of the house. You saw that? Oh, I was hoping... Oh, well, never mind. Maybe it doesn't matter. Collins was excited by this picture. Oh, yes, very. It was quite noticeable. Uh, but surely he'd have seen it before. It was part of the collection. Well, not at all. You have to remember just how big the collection is. Clearing out the gallery, we found all sorts of things. Things that hadn't been seen in years. Such as? We came across a room. It hadn't been open for years by the look of it. And in this room were a number of prints and pictures of a... Shall we say, rather dubious nature. Dubious? Several scene of crime prints, in particular the victims of Jack the Ripper, a number of pieces of early Victorian, well, pornography, and the print you saw. The print of the house? It was all such a rush. It was only when we got here that we had time to look at what we'd found. Picture of a house, artist unknown. Dr Collins had it put in his office. And a few days later, as you say, I noticed a real change in him. Hello? Can I come in? Mm, by all means, Padgett. I've the invoice from the LMS, if you could sign it for me, Dr. Collins. Dr. Collins? Yes, Padgett? Is that champagne you're drinking? No, Padgett, they've found a new way to bottle tea. It's half past ten in the morning. Mm. As always, Paget, you're spot on. Are we celebrating? I am celebrating, Paget. Ah, you'll see, in the fullness of time. Now, isn't there some invoice you're wanting me to sign? Yes, yes. Uh, and there, there you go, Ruth, my girl. Ooh. Cheers. I noticed strewn all over his desk were various books and papers, and they all related to one subject, one person, an artist. By the name of William Hogarth. Famous for his engravings. He did, well, cartoons. Series of pictures attacking the values of 18th century society. The rake's progress, the election. Here, I'll show you. A man in a madhouse. The marks of a pox on that man's neck. And the faces of the people all leery. Greedy, lustful. You understand very well. I might not be a great fan of art, but I do like to think I can appreciate it. Well, you can see they were works of quite savage ferocity. He was never a popular man, and towards the end of his life he fell quite out of favour, even with those he once counted as his friends, particularly an MP by the name of John Wilkes. It said Hogarth died a broken man. So... An undiscovered work by this William Hogarth would be quite valuable. Priceless, I should say. And you believe this picture to be by him? The style is definitely similar to his. Dr Collins believed, believes, that the house shown is Hogarth's London residence in Leicester Square. I see. In fact, it was about then that I first noticed 
Uh, what? He looked as though he hadn't been sleeping and... And there was something else about him. And the air conditioning unit in Chamber 3 has been repaired and the hay wain safely arrived. That's about it, really. Dr Collins? Paget. Yes? Have you ever had a recurring dream? A dream? A recurring dream. Dream as in what happens in your head when you're asleep, recurring as in it happens again and again. I've had recurring nightmares. Since you've been here? I don't know, I suppose so. I mean, there's one I've always had about missing a bus. And when I was at school, I used to have this dream about standing up in the assembly <laughs> hall, only I was wearing my dressing gown. Yes, thank you, Paget. I mean, they say it's your mind dealing with the thoughts of the day, don't they? I think that's the latest theory. If you're not sleeping very well, I have this marvellous herbal preparation my sister sent me. Just get out, will you? As the week went on, he got worse. I mean, he was normally so careful about his appearance, but he started looking positively unkempt. Have you any idea why? Oh, yes. He was frightened, Inspector. Frightened? Of someone? Not someone. You'd better read this. In his journal. Here. February the 8th. The figure has gone. When I looked out tonight, when I looked out tonight the, the street, street was, empty. was empty. My first My thought, first was, thought relief. was relief not, not to have it out there, there staring yeah. up at me. But then I wondered where it had gone to. And when I woke this morning, I found my answer. The ground floor window is open. Of course, the rational part of my mind tells me maybe it was open before, but... Of course, in my heart, I know that not to be the case. What window? What's he referring to? One of the storage huts? You better come with me, Inspector. The door wasn't hidden just to keep you out. I don't understand, Miss Paget. Deliver us from evil, dear Lord and Father. Miss Paget? Look at the picture. What about it? I've kept it in here ever since that day. No, I wouldn't touch it. Just look. It's a black and white engraving of a house with a peculiar coat of arms in the corner. A globe entwined around by a serpent with its tail in its mouth. Just... What am I supposed to be looking for? Look in the street. That figure? It was there before? Yes, it was. Yes. You don't sound so certain, Inspector. I... I just thought... That it was in the bushes? I must have been mistaken. No, you're not mistaken. It was obscured by the bushes. Surely... You're not trying to suggest it's moved. That was my reaction at first. It was half hidden by the bushes. Now it's in the middle of the road, looking up at the house. Come back to the office, Inspector. It doesn't do to be looking at it for too long. No features visible. Except a gleam of white under the hood. It's too smooth, too white to be... Her. Inspector, please. <sighs> There's one good thing about being here. There's plenty of fresh milk. None of that flat, condensed rubbish they're serving up so much nowadays. And you believe this picture is by this Hogarth? In his will, there's a reference to an engraving a posthumous gift to his one-time friend, John Wilkes, the architect of all my troubles. Oh, I'm afraid we've no sugar. And this picture of the house is that picture? I believe so. But even so, I, I don't see where that gets us. Soon after he received the picture... Yes? John Wilkes simply disappeared. That figure, what was that showing white under the hood? It wasn't hair. No. Going back to the here and now, 
Dr. Collins appeared to you to be in a troubled state of mind. Very troubled. You only have to read his journals. And this was after coming back from London. For the next few days, he simply stayed here in his office alone with a picture for hours at a time. The cylinder is dated three days before he disappeared. A room. A simple room. I can see every detail. A plain brown door. No pictures or hangings of any kind. Bare boards, swept clean. A fireplace, but no fire. Little in the way of furniture. A simple bed in one corner. A window, uncurtained. What is this place? I know I lied. I'm sorry. I recognised it as soon as I read it. There's a written description of the room in his journal. Do you know where this room was? No, at least... At least what? I believe it may be a room in the house. The house? The house in the picture? Yes. How would he know what it was like, some room in a house in a picture? He'd know if he had a recurring dream about it. He kept dreaming he was in a house in a picture. Read the journals, it's all there. You said Collins went back to London again just before he disappeared. Yes, quite suddenly one morning. He was off before most of us realised he'd gone. And he came back the day of the snow and went to his office. I went to see him to try and persuade him to come back to the village. Dr Collins... Can I get you something? A hot drink. Uh, a hot drink. Are you... well? Paget. do you believe in evil? Oh, yes, yes, I do. I, I, I've never been religious. <laughs> Maybe if I had been, I... Dr Collins, Nigel... What is it? If, if, what is the matter? If I believed, maybe I'd have had some protection. I mean, people who believe in the bombs know to go down to the to the air raid shelter. The... Oh, it's too late now. Too late? Go on, Paget. Off you go. I can't leave Go, you. for God's sake, woman, go. You don't want to miss your lift. To get one of those miners to give you a piggyback, and that'd never do. Or, but maybe that's just what you want. I... I'll see you tomorrow, Doctor Collins. P Paget. Yes. Thank you. That was the last time I ever saw him. The next day, when I came back, yes, I went straight to his office. The guard said they hadn't seen him, you see, so I thought he'd still be in there. He wasn't in the main office. They said they'd not seen him? No, they hadn't seen him and he'd not come out. How can you be so sure? You forget. It had been snowing all night. There were no footprints. In his office, well, it was locked from the inside. Dr Collins, please, I know you're in there. Please, unlock the door. Please, are you hurt? Is everything all right, Miss Paget? Mr Daniels, please, I need to get in Dr Collins' office. It seems to be locked. Right, stand back, please. No! He wasn't there. The light was on, the electric fire, the recording machine was switched on, his jacket on the back of his chair, a glass of whiskey, half drunk, and on the easel facing the chair was the picture. I found this on his desk. Even in London, the same dream, the same room, there's no escape, no way out. This is the last cylinder. It was in the machine. out across the street to the gardens the bushes always midnight a clock sounding midnight somewhere away to the right out of sight it's outside the door it has been I think the last few times waiting pressing my ear to the ground I can hear sounds oh don't put my eye to the keyhole not again. The last time, the, the 
handle of the door started to turn. I managed to wake up that time, but I can't stay awake forever. I don't want to. Is that him? Who is that? I don't know. We searched the huts, but there was no trace. So I called in the local police. Which seems ironic, considering you spent so much time trying to hide what happened. I don't know what happened. I couldn't not report his disappearance. But you hoped there'd be a few questions asked and everyone would go away. I imagine that point of view is what people were banking on. What people? The people behind this conjuring trick. This office wall is some sort of plywood. I think so. Fairly easy to cut a hole in, I imagine. I don't understand. A hole in a wall. Cut and then repaired. How someone could get out of a room locked from the inside. What I'm telling you, what happened here, is not the ramblings of some dotty old Bible basher. I find all this as hard to comprehend as you yourself. Hogarth dabbled in the occult. It's well documented. So... What you're trying to have me believe is that with the aid of a little satanic intervention, William Hogarth engraves a cursed etching to finish off his most severe critic. And this same picture has, some 300 years later, caused the similar dispatch of the director of the National Gallery. You think I'm making this up? No. I think you believe every word you're telling me. I also think that perhaps someone has been playing a rather cruel trick on you. Dr. Collins? He's the one who's disappeared. You're saying all this is a hoax? You think he staged this whole thing? Yes. But why would he do such a thing? I imagine there's a lot of people who'd pay a lot of money to know the exact location and contents of this place. And be prepared to spirit its director away in a manner that would discourage too many questions. Now, if you'll excuse me... Where are you going? To a phone to organise a complete search of these galleries and caves, and to double the guard. You'll need to conduct a full inventory to make absolutely certain nothing is missing. Wait, Inspector. There's no time to lose. You're making a mistake. I don't think Please. so. Please. Miss Patchett, the whole security of this place could be compromised. Let me show you one more thing. There's not time. There is evil here. There is not. I know it's hard to believe. Evil, as you call it, doesn't exist. It most certainly does. No. What exists is stupidity. You say evil as if it's some malevolent force. It's not. People do evil things because they're weak and selfish and stupid. They steal and shoot and fly planes that drop bombs that kill good people, not because there is some evil force prompting them, but because they can, because they're told to, they want to. And behind those impulses there is evil, just as there is good. No! Just as there's real feeling behind every one of those pictures out there. There's evil behind that engraving, and we ignore it at our peril. Your wife realised that. She knew there was more to pictures than canvas and paint. No, there is not. It's just canvas and paint and ink. Some are good and some are bad. You don't know. I know. My wife is dead because she insisted on going to see some pictures whilst an air raid was going on. That is what I know. It's not evil. It's just stupid. Just plain stupid. Please, Inspector. What? This attitude of yours, it's dangerous. That picture... It's like a wild animal. It doesn't understand, doesn't differentiate, it just senses hostility. That picture is merely the product of a sad, twisted artist with an overly big ego. <gasps> What's happened to the lights? A power cut. It happens from time to time. Matches, matches. Oh, candles. We keep them all over the place just in case. I've heard that noise before. There's something you need to see. What? Please, come back to the storeroom. What am I supposed to be looking at? Take the candle. The picture. I've seen the picture. Look again. Please. What do you see? I see a black and white engraving of a house at midnight. In the street. The figure. 
It's not there. And on the ground floor of the house. One of the windows is open. When I saw it the next morning, the picture, in the lit window were the silhouettes of two figures. It looked as if one was throttling the other. It's got in. Please, Inspector, slow down. It's always a bit disorientating coming outside. I'm all right. I'm all right. I can phone from the guardhouse, can I not? Who are you going to phone? My superiors. And tell them what? That Mr Collins has disappeared in suspicious circumstances and that we need to search these mines. Now take a deep breath. The sudden rush of oxygen can go to the head. There is nothing wrong with me. You saw the picture had changed. I don't know what I saw. We both saw it. If you'll excuse me. Please, Inspector Hanson, be careful. Miss Patchett, I will be fine, and so will the collection. Goodbye, then, Inspector. Where are you going? I'm going to take that picture, and I'm going to leave it in the deepest tunnel I can find. Got a light, mate. Oh. This trade's taking forever. <sighs> yeah, the crawler, we call it. Goes all round the houses, see? <laughs> yeah, you look down here. I'm fine. Ground floor window. This is open. There's a My wife is dead. Room. It's a simple room. Plain brown door. No pictures or hangings of any kind. Bare boards. So clean. Fireplace, but no fire. Little in the way of furniture. It's a simple bed in one corner. A window. Uncurtained. Outside in the street. Gardens. Bushes. A clock. It's sounding midnight somewhere. Away to the right. Out of sight. And across the road. A figure watching. <laughs> you all right, mate? Yes. I must have fallen asleep. Oh, you did. Dead to the world, you were. Night House, Inspector Hansen was played by Roger Morledge, Miss Paget by Caroline John, and Dr. Collins by James Nickerson. Original music was composed and performed by Christopher Maiden. The Midnight House was written by Jonathan Hall and directed in Manchester by Polly Thomas. Mm -hmm.